Hi there, this is going to be a quick Eagle tutorial on how to set up the basics of an 80 mega 328p chip. So uh, the first step is I've uh, downloaded the data sheet just for reference if there's anything we need to look up. So if you open up where your Eagle is installed and uh, go to the start one directory into the libraries folder, this is where all the libraries live. So all of the components on the add menu are pulled from the libraries in here. So there's a few good ones to have. Um, I think Eagle comes with uh, the Farnell one or Element 14 one. So lots of stuff in there. And um, Spark Fun library is quite useful, but for um, for hab use, which is what I do mostly in Eagle, you want Yahoo's library, the ADA library. So if you go into his GitHub. Go to Eagle Libraries and uh, just download all of that. Yes, please. And into our libraries folder, I've already got it here, but I'm going to get the updated version. Drag and drop that in. So that's uh, the ABA library installed. We might have to might have to restart Eagle, so I'll just do that now. So we'll go into libraries and just check that that's there. Yeah, ABA. Now, if you um, if you open the admin menu and there's nothing in there, that might be because some of these checkboxes are, uh, are greyed out because they're disabled. So there's, I've actually got a few down here that are disabled. I'll just enable these. Okay, so we've got the ABA library there and we can see all the components in there. So this is a useful library to have. For the purposes of this tutorial. Now we want to create a new project. So I'll do that by right clicking and selecting new project. I'm going to call this lesson one. And then from in that we can right click and create a new schematic. Yeah, nice and big so you can see it. first step we want to do is uh, add the components we're going to need. Now the main one for this is going to be Atmel's 80 mega 328p chip. We're going to use the TQFP, that's the thin quad flat pack version. So you can either do that by typing add in this menu here at the top and pressing return, or you can just use the add button on the toolbar. So we'll open up, expand the AVA library. And grab the 80 mega 328p chip and click OK. And uh, we'll just put that roughly in the middle and left click the mouse button to place it. Press the escape button, we'll return back to this add menu. Now, other components we're going to need for this are a uh, crystal. So I'll use uh, this one here. There's uh, two versions of it. I use the HC49 version. It's a surface mount crystal. I'm, I'm going to use the 8 megahertz version for this because it's a 3.3 volt board. The uh, clock speed of the crystal is dependent on the voltage. There's some info about that in the uh, data sheet that I won't go into now. But uh, basically, 5 volts, you're good for 16 megahertz. 3.3 volts, you really want 8 megahertz. And we put that, uh, they're not labelled. So I'll go to the right, our uh, data sheet is going to come in handy then. We'll just drop that down there for, for now. And press the escape. Back up into the add menu. Alright, we'll uh, just get rid of the AVA library for a minute and we'll go down to RCL, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. 
and we want the pin capacitors. Let's have a look down the right hand side until we come across. There we go. 0603. That's the size of the capacitor. We'll just click OK. We'll drop two of those down. And press the escape button. Now the other component we're going to need is a resistor. So we're going to RE here. And find the 0603 size resistor. Sorry, I've got the screen there. Drop that down over there. Escape back up into the add menu. The next thing we want is some power. So I'm just going to supply power to this using a header. Oh, where does that come? Pin pin. Pin head, pin headers. Okay, so if you scroll down here, you can see you get all different size headers. We're just going to have a two pin power header. That one there, pin HD dash one X two. And we'll drop that down over here somewhere. When you are dropping uh, components or moving them, if you use the uh, right click button, that will rotate the component and left click to place it. Right, I think we're done here now. Oh, we just need one more thing. I can't remember what the component li the library name is that. Supply, that's it. Supply one and ground. Okay. Just have one of those for now. Escape and escape again. So these should be all the components we need for now. If we switch to the data sheet and start scrolling down, pinout will be quite useful for this. So PB6 and PB7 are for the crystal. Oh, there we go. I'll save this before we get too carried away. And the last thing we want to do is have to start again from square one. So that was PB6 and PB7, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. So these numbers actually stand for um, port B uh, number 6 and port B number 7. So we'll use the move tool on the toolbar and move the crystal. So it's roughly between PB6 and PB7. Now would be a good time to click this grid logo up here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to set uh, grid to millimeters. Change the primary grid to 1.27 millimeters. And for the alternative grid, I'm going to use finest. So what you'll find is, oh there we go, that lines up quite nicely now. So we'll just get that between those two. And there. And put the capacitors just in line. With that. Okay, so I'll just use the scroll wheel to uh, zoom in there. We're going to add a wire going from the end of PB6 up onto that crystal. Now, we don't really want the uh, wire to cover up the component like that because then it's hard to tell if it's actually connected or if it's just overlapped it. So if you use the right click button, you can change change the way the track comes out. It'll probably be easiest to demonstrate. There, yeah. we're cycling through these options up here. I'm going to use this one. Take that out there. Press the escape button and do the other one. Yeah, so that is connected there, and we'll then take those across to the capacitors, like so. Now it's a good idea to specify the values of these. No, we won't specify the value of that then. We'll specify the values of the capacitors. These want to be 22 picofarads. 
I think that is the recommended value on the data sheet for the uh, 80 mega 3 to 8p from 0 to 20 megahertz. I believe that 22 picofarads should be good. Alright, one thing to point out, we're going to add junctions here because these, these are joined. If you just had two wires crossing over each other, um, without a junction, that would mean they're not connected, they just overlap. If you put a junction over that, that means they are connected. So, <clears throat> so add two of those. And we'll use the move tool again. Bring our ground down here. Right click to rotate. And we'll connect that there. That there. Then we want to merge net segment N$3 into supply net ground. So yeah, we're connecting this net segment here onto the ground. Yeah, we want to do that. And another junction in there. Okay, so that's the crystal all done. The next step is we need to connect up some of the grounds on the chip. There are two, I think. Where are they? Oh, there's three down here. So we'll use the copy tool. Left click this ground. And just pop it down there. And use a wire. Connect between those. I've got the junctions in. Yeah, so all of those are connected to ground. I'll quickly demonstrate the show tool. If you use that and you select um select a grounded net, like right this one here, it's definitely connected to ground, it will highlight all the ones on the same net so you can see all of the pins connected to ground. Okay, we'll connect the uh, connect the ground up here. This is going to be our power header, so we're going to have um, a ground connected in there and a 3.3 volt input connected in there. So, in the 3.3 volt input, I'll just run that out to there and click to drop the track and escape. What we'll do now is add a label. We're going to use this uh, sort of flag thing here. Set the size to about 0 0.8. I think that should be okay. And click down there. That then uh, just labels what net this is on. And we can rename that name by clicking on the wire and call this our VCC. Okay. So we know this wire is on VCC. And we can then do exactly the same over here. I'm going to do it from the top one actually. There. Another one of those in there. Now we want to connect this VCC to. Oh, this is quite hard to read actually, isn't it? Pull that out a little bit more. I'm going to make sure this VCC is connected over here. So we're just going to rename this to the VCC net as well. Press enter. Would we like to connect this net here to VCC? Yes, we would. And then it's just a case of connecting all of those three pins. So the next thing we want to do is connect this pull up resistor. Can set the value of that by pressing the value tool and set the value as 10k, 10,000 ohms. And we'll connect that between the reset, which isn't labeled. Let's check out the data sheet. Reset here. PC6. PC6. It's over here. So use the move tool. Take that over to PC6. And that over the wire. And do exactly the same over here. This is a pull up resistor, so we're going to go PC6 through the 10k resistor up to VCC. Put another label on. And change the name to VCC. Yes.
if you just search for Arduino pin mapping, you'll be taken to this page, arduino.cc slash em hacking pin mapping. And you can see basically what, uh, what these pins correspond to in the Arduino environment. So, in this example, I'm going to add an LED to digital pin 13, which is PB5. Move that out of the way. And on PB5, there we are, there's one. PB5. We'll add a LED. I'm not really sure what kind of LED. I know I want a um, 0603 LED, so I'm going to search using wildcards LED. And we have got loads of stuff back. Anything to do with LED has unfortunately come up, so we'll untick description and press enter. And yeah, that's filtered us down a bit more. There's actually an LED library, so that should be useful. So we'll go into LED, LED. You can get a nice preview of some of these. And we want a 0603 LED. There we go, LED 0603. So use that one. And just pop that down with the anode facing. Oh, sorry, it's over here, isn't it? Yeah, with the anode facing towards the eye open. Escape out of that. This line here, if you didn't already know, is the, um, is the side that you connect to the ground and put positive power to the other side of the LED to light it up. So we'll connect on PB5. There's the LED. And copy our ground. Oh, yes, we actually want, depending on what LED this is, what voltage it runs at. I'm just going to stick a resistor in there. So back to the RCL library. And if that presents it's clear. So 0603 size, okay. And we need down my app resistor, sorry. the ground, pop that up there. And it's as easy as that. I think we're almost done. We're going to pop some junctions on there, I've missed that. Okay, I think that is about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the tutorial useful. Um, apologies to the audio quality. I've uh, got a new microphone and order, so it should hopefully be better next time. In the next video, I'll go into how to actually route the board or create the board, lay out the components, and um, yeah, we'll route that, go through exporting the Gerbers and um, how to send the board off for manufacture. And then from that point, we can. Um, Add some more features. I'll do another video adding an NTX2 or an RFM22B, and then another video adding a new Box Max 6 or Max 7 GPS module, and that should be all you need to know to get started making your own boards for having. Just one thing to point out with this quickly, in case you did uh, get carried away and decide to make it, um, you don't actually have a way to program this yet. We need to add a um, ISP programming header to actually get code onto the chip, but uh, I'll probably come into that in the next video. So thank you for watching.